I'm Peter Samuelson. I'm a film producer. I'm a philanthropist. I'm a social entrepreneur. So I understand that you want to talk about Bridges. I've worked with Jeff Bridges on a film called Arlington Road. I've never worked with his brother, Bo Bridges, but that is my experiences of the Bridges family. Ah, you don't want to talk about the Bridges family. You want to talk about Bridges and walls. So uh, let me start again. So uh, where was I when the Berlin Wall fell? I was running around Australia setting up the second overseas branch of my original nonprofit, the Starlight Children's Foundation. We had built various chapters across the United States. Uh, and then I went over to London and we started Starlight UK. And then I flew to Sydney and we started the Australian version. And that's exactly where I was. Also, let me point out to the millennials out there that I was able to work that out by within 10 seconds of going into my 1989 paper diary and finding the date. Do that on your digital. I think a significant wall was when I finished my university education. I went to Cambridge on a scholarship. I was the first kid in my family uh, to ever go to university. I went through Cambridge. I got my bachelor's. I got my master's. And when I came out, I realized that there was a system in the United Kingdom based on apprenticeship and probably going back to the Middle Ages where the only way that a young person got a job was if all the older people already had one. So they started by filling jobs with the 50-year-olds, then the 40-year-olds, then the 30-year-olds, and last in the line was the 20-something, regardless of whether they were the only one that was bilingual and the film was being made in Morocco, or you'd actually done the thing four times before and none of the other candidates had. So it wasn't a meritocracy. And that was a definite wall for me because uh, I was young. And I came to America primarily because the American dream says, uh, we don't care who you're from, where you're from, who your family is. We don't care about your parents. We care about you working hard. We'll get you educated. And then we will promote you rapidly to the level uh, of your ability. And if anything, it's the other way around in the United States. Uh, I think youth has uh, an advantage, and that's continued until today. I think many things have changed in the United Kingdom, and I think there is some meritocracy now, but there's still a very uh, uh, strong class structure. It's still much more likely if your dad is a plumber that you might be an electrician or you might be a plumber, uh, but you're not going to be a brain surgeon. Uh, whereas in the United States, absolutely, the son or daughter even of anyone can be anything if they're good enough and they work hard enough uh, and also with a little bit of luck. So that is the difference. And that was the wall that I banged up against in the United Kingdom and which I managed to climb over into the United States. Well, we're recording this uh, a week and a half after the election, but not yet the appointment of Donald Trump as president of the United States. One of his core planks in his election campaign was to build a 3,000 mile wall between Mexico and everybody south of it to stop them coming into the United States and anything north of it. It remains to be seen what he will end up wanting to do as policy, as opposed to what he promised the people who voted for him, which was that he would uh, you know, have a nil tolerance uh, immigration policy, that he would in fact uh, export undocumented aliens, uh, and that he would build this robust wall that would cut immigration to uh, nearly zero other than those authorized, which presumably will be limited as well. What we don't know is what he will actually do. Uh, I personally believe that uh, the bill of goods that was sold to the United States with regard to an exclusionary immigration policy 
was short-sighted. I believe it can be shown by an endless number of serious economic pieces of research that immigration is a net plus for an economy, that the building of walls, both physical and through tariffs, in an, an, an inherently international uh, world of commerce uh, is short-sighted and actually depresses GNP. This country, the United States of America, and I'm one as an immigrant, this country has been built economically by immigrants. Well, I love the pictures of the rock musicians, the pop and rock and whatever they are musicians. There was that period in the mid 80s where David Bowie and Joe Cocker and Bruce Springsteen, some of them played, and there were some others too, some of them played on the western side of the wall, but right up against it. And then Bruce Springsteen actually, God knows how they got permission, but he played a concert in East Berlin. Regardless of where they actually strummed their guitar and spoke into the microphone, uh, the music went right across the wall. It was as though the wall wasn't there. There was a crowd when Bowie played, there was a crowd on the opposite side of the wall, wall that was 100, 150,000 people, who knows? I think culture, the arts, music, film, video, the magic of the internet, they know no walls. This exhibit, which shows the arts in the service of civilization, is one way of looking at it, uh, is a touchstone to something that's getting lost in our educational system and in society at large, which is that the arts are the breeder reactor where disparate people come together, where we can think outside the box, and where we can reassert our humanity before we go down into the weeds of our social challenges. I think that the fact that budget cuts have decimated the arts programs in our school systems is extremely unfortunate and we should give due weight to the arts because that's where human, humans become bigger humans uh, with brighter futures. It's not just math and English, it's also all the arts and we need more back soon.